Always think about safety when you're canning. Let me know. This is the complete idiot's guide for canning. All right, folks, welcome back to Bones Backyard Homestead. On this episode, we're gonna continue our series with the bread and butter by doing pickles in slicers and spears. Stay tuned. <music> So we got some store-bought cucumbers here. These are gonna be for my slicers or chips. What do you guys call them? Leave them down in the comments. I don't know, I call them chips, but I also call them slicers. So I mean, I don't know what I prefer really. So we're gonna do two of those. It might do just one jar. I'm hoping for two, but we'll see. One of my Ashley cucumbers and one of my white cucumbers and turn these into spears. And that might be a jar or two. So let's start cutting this. And again, we're gonna use the Mandalorian, oh, I mean the mandolin, and we're gonna get those cut real quick. If you guys know where I can get something that does more of the, um, I don't know if you wanna call it corrugated or wavy, but I don't know, like to me, I like my pickles to have the little ridges. So if there's a way, cause like this man, this Mandalorian or Mandal Mandolin just has the straight blade and I can take these out and that tells the thickness of my cut, which really I only have two, it's a thick slice and a thin slice. So let me know if it's an Amazon link, leave it down in the comment. chips all snug away we're gonna grab our Grab a sauce here, or brine. Make sure that we wipe that rim real good. Take these lids, finger tight. Now the directions specify exactly how we're gonna water bath these. It's completely different than anything we've done so far. On this one, it says for a quart, 15 minutes in the water bath. And then we turn off the heat remove the ring and let it sit for another five minutes in the bath 
I don't think they're supposed to be, it doesn't specify if they're sunk in there or not. So yeah, it doesn't really say. So I'm up, I'm assuming, oh, I don't know. I think I'll just dunk them back in. So we're gonna get these two jars in the water bath, do the 15 minutes, then the five minutes, and go from there. All right, so I need to do the two uh, spears before I actually water bath everything. when I do this because as you can see it's already topping off so I'm going to take some water out of here and lower this thing in here All right, 15 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on here, that way it helps. Whew, I almost had a uh, interesting experience. So, they were in there for 15 minutes, pulled them out, and set them on the counter. For one, you can't hold on to those jars as you're taking the rings off. Had to use a little, um, pliers that I use when I'm sterilizing them to hold the jar then had to use like a silicone pot holder to pop the rings off and when I did that I am thankful that I actually had a silicone holder because whoo it was like a volcano just <laughs> everywhere so they're gonna sit on the top for their five minute cool or I don't know what you want to call it, warming bath, warm down. That's gonna happen. I got bread and butter all over my freaking counter, all over the floor. It's everywhere. The thing that's gonna make me kind of hesitant now is that the rings obviously did not seal because of that volcanic eruption. Are they sealing now? Or when I take them out of the water before I put the rings back on for them to cool off for 24 hours, do I need to wipe the rim again, put the lid on, and then go from there? This has been a bad experience. I just want to bring you guys back so you guys think about that when you're popping those rings off. Maybe so just doing it barehandedly or maybe use a rag. But if you can, like I said, I got these silicone sits on the it sits on the counter you can set a pot on it it doesn't burn your counter so safety always think about safety when you're canning all right folks that's going to wrap up the series on the bread and butter on the next series like i keep on saying I, i'm hyping it up because i think it's going to be phenomenal it's going to be amazing they're going to be so tasty i have A whole bunch of pears. I wish they were mine, but again, store-bought. I have a whole bunch of peaches. I try to get these locally. Unfortunately, my place that I normally go to did not have enough. So, we got peaches. Then we have a black plum. I'm really looking forward to this. Oh so hard not to actually eat them right now i'm telling you delicious so we're going to be doing a different kind of process with these they're not going to be uh, pressurized they're i do believe they're still going to be a water bath 
I'll have to look into that again. I'll have to make sure I have the instructions. I'm looking, I am looking at these websites you guys are recommending, the USDA, um, Ball's website, Mason's website, wh whatever I can find, I'm using it to double check, make sure I'm not giving you guys bad information. So, those are gonna be, like I, kept, I keep on saying, I'm not sure if it's pickling, preserving, I guess processing is the best way to say it because we're gonna be doing a, a syrup. And I have a twist to that. A lot of people use sugar in their syrup or juices. I have something I think is gonna be unique and interesting. So please subscribe to the channel so you can see how we're going to process these peaches, plums, and pears. Tongue twister every single time. Peaches, plums, and pears. Peaches, plums, and pears. Processing peaches, plums, and pears. I'm getting better. See you guys and folks and gals.